Yeah, so um, in terms of collaboration between uh, broadcasters on the European stage, obviously we're seeing um, you know, companies pan-European wide that have gotten together uh, in the past few years, namely EBX and uh, RTL at Alliance. And I think from a media sales perspective, it's worked out really well. You know, they have managed to create scale for brands that want to reach um, you know, consumers in multiple countries. So from that perspective, we have witnessed sort of a, a sales collaboration that has, uh, that has worked pretty well. In the US, we're starting to witness collaboration within a particular region uh, with things like OpenAP, where um, sort of the core networks have gotten together uh, and formed an alliance to anticipate the new needs of measurement and come up with the right um, uh, sort of cross uh, cross-measurement uh, currency, which is really great and positive for, for that market. I think here, we are starting to see the premise of um, within-country collaboration. You know, things um, like Planet V, led by ITV, are a great precursor to making this happen because clearly it needs scale, um, it needs standardization, and it needs something that is easy to buy. And so all these things happen when people collaborate so that TV, CTV uh, can be unified as with as great a pool of inventory as possible so that indeed they can compete with the more established video platforms like YouTube and now Netflix and Disney Plus with ads who are more global. Um, and we'll be looking at these markets in a very different way than all these CTV platform or broadcasters have looked at it together. And then we're seeing also one very interesting trend, which is the new entrants such as you know, Pluto or Rakuten or others who are building channels and you know, fast proposition are relying on the existing set of broadcasters to go to market with experienced sales team and experienced tech. And that's very positive for the industry who is looking to gather scale. So it's very interesting. In the past few months, I've heard contextual targeting more than I ever have you know, in the last sort of 10 years. There's a number of reasons for it. One, the technology is starting to become available um, for publishers to capture information that make it uh, relevant in a contextual targeting uh, uh, you know, perspective. So things like metadata or things like capturing um, you know, context for the, the show render it possible. Right? So now somebody could capture the mood of a particular news bulletin or a particular channel to decide whether they want to be advertising on that particular show or whether they don't want to be advertising on this show. So from that perspective, it's uh, super important. We are starting, you know, we are coming to market with a proposition that will bundle um, that aspect. It is, you know, it is hard when you do that to kind of take your entire video inventory on perspective. So things like forecasting and pacing become more complicated to manage. And without getting too technical, that adds another layer to take into consideration when you decide what ad to put to users at a particular point in the program. And then does the program have different mood at a certain point, right? A program that might start very light, might have a very heavy middle and you know, end up really well. And how do you capture that break by break? Uh, and so that's the challenge, but hopefully technology is there uh, to solve it. And it's very important because we are you know, in a world where you know, data is becoming less and less usable for the right reason, the protection of the consumer, and therefore if you combine first party data with contextual targeting, you potentially have something that's very powerful in, in the world of targeting. So it was a great question, you know, trends are you know, a popular, um, popular topic. I would say that the unification of various sales channels, is, I would say it's always been a hot topic, but it is now becoming more and more popular. Because scale is there, because there are new entrants who aren't going to staff up on salespeople, right? They may hire a few, they may hire locally, but they're not going to bring, um, you know, 700 salespeople as it was the case in the U.S. with the heyday of television sales. So they're looking to collaborate to bring more people together in selling their platforms. That's the first trend, right? Unification and scale how to bring inventory together onto one platform that is sold as one type of inventory across programmatic sales channel, across direct sales sale channel, all in one. The second trend which is starting to appear more and more in Europe is the move from GRP to CPM. 
you know, TF1, Antenna Trust have come up with their plans over the next 18 months to move to a total video um, schedule, which means selling everything on a CPM basis. How we can support that, that's going to be, you know, a challenge for everybody that still sells mostly on, on linear old principles like GRP. So how do we accompany TV to this new, um, this new milestone? And finally, um, you know, the one big thing which I think has been sort of underinvested in is content, right? How does content become a source for ad tech uh, across the board and bring, you know, we bring technology upstream in the value chain so that content takes advantage of these various advertising opportunities and branding opportunities more upstream in the content creation part. Mm -hmm.